Should you go after seasonal products when selling on Amazon FBA? I discussed that in this video. Hello everyone, it's Sajad, Stealth Amazon FBA. So this was a comment I received on a previous video, somebody asking about seasonal products. So I thought I'd answer it right now. And just remember, if you have any questions at all about business in general, or specifically Amazon FBA, please comment below and I'll try my best to answer them. I'll even make a separate video if I think it's important for more people to hear about the answer. So seasonal products, let's define them first. What do we mean by that? Well, basically in its simplest form, it's just products that sell better at certain times of the year. And there can be many, many reasons for that. But let me use an easy example. Let's say garden furniture. Right now it's summer here in the UK. So garden furniture is doing very well. It's one of the most searched for phrases on amazon.co.uk. However, in the winter time, you're not gonna get massive sales of garden furniture. So it's regarded in general as a seasonal product. So should you go after these types of products? But let me give you some pros and cons because I think that will really help. I'm gonna discuss the cons first because really for a beginner, seasonal products are something you should stay away from. They require a lot more experience to manage. And here's why, so here are some of the cons. First of all, there are issues with regards to how many products you actually need to deal with that particular season. So predicting the exact quantities can be very, very difficult. You might end up ordering too many and then be left with hundreds of units of stock which are not gonna sell very quickly if the season has passed. Or you'll underestimate and halfway through the season, you'll completely be out of stock and then you won't have enough time to get back in stock before a particular season ends. For example, the Christmas season where a lot of people target Christmas specific products. Obviously, if it gets to January and you haven't sold out on your products, then you're in trouble. The other cons are when it comes to actually organizing shipments. Now, as a lot of you have experienced, if you're already selling on Amazon in the last 12 months, it's been tricky with regards to shipping. Now, although that problem has gotten a lot better, it's still difficult to predict how long it's going to take to get your product to a fulfillment center and to get it showing as in stock for customers to purchase. You can estimate it might take seven to 10 days or three to four weeks, but it can be a lot sooner or a lot longer than that. So you have to give yourself a little bit of leeway. Now, if you're selling a seasonal product and you're putting all, a lot of your budget towards this, then it can make matters very difficult. And that leads me on to the final con, which is cash flow. If you're relying on seasonal products to provide you with cash flow, then it's not a very consistent, reliable source of income as compared to a product that sells all year round with little fluctuations. And as we're talking about that, how do you actually identify formally whether something's seasonal? Well, there's many, many ways to do it, but one of the easiest ways is just check on Google Trends. Just type into Google something like garden furniture and then click on Google Trends and it'll show you a graph. And you can do that country by country specific or even area specific within your country to see how much search volume there is for that particular product. Obviously, you can also do it directly on Amazon and reverse engineer to check the search volume. Now I've talked about some of the negatives, but what are the pros? Because I also sell seasonal products. So why do I do that? Well, first of all, there's massive sales volume during that particular season. If you time everything right, you should expect to see a lot more sales than a seasonal product potentially than your regular selling products. The other massive advantage is a lot of the time you don't need a lot of sponsored ads or any other sorts of promotions. If there's already massive demand, massive search volume for that particular set of keywords or that niche then you don't really need to promote that much. And that leads me on to my next pro. Well, this is something you can also do. You can slowly and casually increase the price of your product during that peak season, especially if you're going towards running out of stock. You'll be able to increase your price, maximize your profit, and still maintain a decent number of sales, especially if you've got that sales velocity going already and you've realized that you're not gonna have much stock left, but you've still got a couple of weeks less left of the season. So it's not worth it to try and get new stock in. So you can try and manipulate things by increasing your price. So let's say you're selling for 20, 20 pounds, try and increase to 24 or 25 pounds. You might find you still sell out of your stock anyway, but again, you maximize your profit. So it's a win-win. So now that I've discussed the pros and cons, should you do it? And also what's the best way to actually do this if you're interested? And by the way, if you're enjoying the videos, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new. It really helps me out here with the YouTube algorithm. So what's the best way to actually do it and should you do it? My opinion, if you've already got some experience selling on Amazon and you've got consistent cash flow, then definitely go for one or two seasonal products and test it out and see how it goes. 
But like I said, potentially, it can massively grow your business if you do everything right. So what's the best way to do it? Well, the best way is to be proactive rather than reactive. You don't wanna get halfway through summer, realize that garden furniture is doing really well when you look at the product research tools and then start trying to sell it because it's gonna take a few weeks to get your product in stock. Be proactive. You should be preparing for that market a month or two before the season actually arrives. So start getting into stock, getting that confirmation of order from suppliers, etc., making your listings and so on. Another tip is to go after the products that are seasonal, but also have a good baseline number of sales throughout the year. So they have slight fluctuations throughout the year, but good sales, and then they peak suddenly. So for example, certain items related to things people do in the summer. For example, perhaps people playing more sports, doing outside barbecues, festivals, etc. If you have products related to this that also sell all year round and you have product research software that can prove that to you, that's a good product to go for because then even if you miss the season or after the season, even if you still have stock, that particular product is selling all year round. That's actually better than going for a product that's very Christmas specific. So let me give you an example. If you are selling, for example, uh, Christmas tree lights, they will only really sell at one time of the year. However, if you're selling toys and games in general, obviously they'll sell better in Christmas, but they also sell well all year round. So I hope that makes sense. If you have any other topics you'd like me to cover, just mention it in the comment section below and I'll leave it there for now. Thanks for listening.